Hey guys, uh, I'm Kenny here coming at you with another StarCraft 2 guide. This time it's going to be another PvP guide. Uh, we did one PvP guide already. I'm going to do another one here, a little bit more standard of how I normally play. And I'm going to kind of show you, uh, you know, a different way to open. It doesn't have to be the opener that we did last game. This build is actually going to be a bit different. Um, this is actually going to be something I've, I'm still practicing and I'm not super confident with, but it's something that, I mean, you guys could definitely have some success with, success with it and it has some very real strengths. Um, it's going to be a big Blink Stalker build on two base. That really main goal is to pressure the third base, pressure some certain openers that your opponent can do, some disruptor openers, some third openers. I mean, it's actually a very punishing build. And it's actually a very strong build, just going Blink Stalker. So I'm going to show you here. So we're going to open standard. We're going to go 14 pylon, 15 gateway, 17 assimilator. Do not mind that gas. And we're going into a 19 Nexus here. This is how I open every single PvP. You can also open Nexus first PvP. Uh, that also works, but this this is usually how I open. And uh, you know, you get your gas on or cyber cybo on 19, gas on 20. Or keep scanning. I will prefaces. But we've actually beat played this guy about this is about our fifth time versus this guy on ladder, and um, tonight in the same session. So we've beaten him about four times already. So I did kind of have his number tonight. So you got to kind of know there might be a little bit of meta game going on. There might be a little bit of mind games going on. You know, we've kind of seen each other quite a bit. So we kind of understood each other's play style and a situation where we both might try to do something similar. So he actually has a pretty good defense for the build I do, but I'll tell you right now, there's definitely a lot of builds you can do that can really punish this. And, I, and this is one of my first times doing this build, so this is going to be like you guys. Like this is one of my first times doing this build. And also the thing about this build was I didn't do it, I didn't plan on doing this right away. I didn't plan on going aggression. It was more or less what I scouted and how I reacted to things. So I went to his base. And we saw, what did we see when we went into his base? We saw a standard, this is a Nexus Nexus first opener. You open Nexus first, you open double gateway, double gas. And we faced him a couple times, so that's how we kind of understood his opener. He was going double adept for a while, which is kind of why we chroned out two adepts. And it's a situation where basically what was happening is, this is this is one of the best open. this is basically the opener I usually do to handle double gateway aggression. So what ends up happening is I open, I chrono my first adept, and I chrono a second adept just to deal with this. And I keep them both here. Because usually it won't be four adepts, it'll just be two adepts. So then it'll be two adepts and then two stalkers usually. So if you have your only two adepts out here and just kind of ready to attack and fight his two adepts off, then it's fine just to open one gate. You don't need to be on a second gateway as long as you defend like that. So we go up, we're going into blank. Both of us are going into blank, obviously. It's a pretty standard style. And, uh, you know, we're, I mean, we played him a couple times, so we kind of know. But I will say in PvP, guys, this is really good against, as I said, a disruptor builds, a quick third build. A lot of the maps, like this map, this is really good on maps like that double gold map, Prairion, I'm not sure the main, but the double gold map uh, for your third and fourth is really good on. Central Protocol is really good on. Ruins of Terror is pretty good. Dust Towers. I mean, a lot of these maps where there's a lot of space. Like, this map, it's okay. It's actually better on, like, the double gold map is what I noticed the best. And a cute little move you like I like to do here as well with the double adept, because I didn't see... His double adepts never came and attacked me, so I understood he didn't go double adepts. So I brought my two adepts out here, and what you can do is you can shade and just bring them up here. You know, don't throw them away here because the overcharge will kill you. So just bring them up here, and then shade again, right? And don't even bring him in here. Just a scouting tool, right? I get a CX, CX, yeah, okay, a blink. Cause I actually was playing a bit safe this game, right? I'm getting an observer out. I actually thought he was going to go DT because we played him so many times in a row. So I, I mean, I played it a little bit safer than you normally have to. Because I was like, oh, he's probably going DTC. I went one gate, Twilight Road, but normally I'd go three gates. Which I think is probably better. But I went for this style. But I think if you're doing this build at home, I would recommend just going Twilight, three gates, Robo, and then probably three more gates, even maybe a fourth gate. Just to really add on that Blink Stalker pressure and really more commit to it. See, I mean, there, th as I'm saying, like, there's a lot of styles you can do with this build. I mean, just because you see this build order, I want to emphasize you don't have to go for this build order. It doesn't have to be... You know, when you do this every game or a couple games, don't you don't make sure you don't go, you know, gate twilight robo every game. Mix it up. Go gate three gates and then robo or three gates, or it should always be gate twilight. But then it should be, you know, usually I would say it should be two more gates and then robo instead of robo and then two more gateways. Mostly because getting early blank stalkers out is more important. And a situation where, I mean, this observer is not going to help me, right? I mean, having the extra gates right now would be better. And basically, I scout. I see what he's going for, and you know, I decide, you know what, let's just go up to 7 gate blank. This is actually the very first time I've done it, but I want to show you guys how I do it. So, I see, as you can see, I'm way oversaturated, 
Normally when you go for a timing attack like this, um, usually you want to keep it on maybe 16, just 16 workers here and 16 workers here. Really you do. I mean, as long as it's not an all-in, you, you don't want to over-probe because then things are later than they should be. So once again, I emphasize, you know, I, I'm not doing this build perfectly, so I wouldn't copy this build, you know, word for word here. You know, I'd try to, maybe once you get the 16 workers, stop making probes, and then get, get seven more, three more, four more gateways up. Because that's really important. It makes things a lot faster and, you know, a lot more, you can get a lot more done. Because ex especially, like, when you're going for an all-in, just generally, guys, when you go for an all-in, like, let's say you're going for an immortal all-in, you should really only have about 12 workers on your natural. Like, let's say it's PPZ and you want to go for an immortal in, you really should not be mining that much. It should be an all-in. Like, you're cutting things for things to be faster. In this game, I didn't know I was actually going to be doing this build until I decided it late. So, you know, I, I ended up happening, it ended up happening pr rather late. But you can definitely get these a little bit earlier than I did. And uh, you could have had a pro I could have had this proxy piling out before, right? I'm sending him out for proxy piling, proxy gateway. And, uh, but, you know, it's a pretty good build. Also, things that are very important, some very good things to know with this build is the amount of stalkers that one shot a disruptor. So, I tested it yesterday, and I don't have a forge this game, right? I didn't go forge, which is, I think that's fine with this build, but you could get a forge as well, I would say. Um, but things to know, it takes 15 unupgraded, so if you have, like right now we have stalkers without plus one attack, it takes 15 stalkers to one shot a disruptor. Like that's very good to know, right? Because if you can blink on a disruptor, before that you can kill it and then the shot doesn't go off, right? So it's very important. So 15 stalkers do it, kill it with uh, without an attack upgrade. It takes 14 to kill it with plus one, and it takes 13 stalkers to kill a disruptor with plus two and plus like if you have plus two it takes 13 stalkers if you have plus three it takes 13 stalkers some some good numbers to know and normally in longer games and disruptor games you'll have plus one you'll have plus, usually you have plus two and plus three so about 13 stalkers is what you want but 15 will always be safe to one shot a disruptor because you wouldn't be going any armor upgrades in, Pro, in protoss versus protoss so you can pretty much assume that it's going to be 15 or 13 i mean and you can just click on his units and try to see his, his information so i mean i still made too many probes here but we're going to push out now. And he actually has quite a few stalkers of his own. And this is a situation where Caesar's double all the charge. So I, I do know he's taking this base. But I mean, let's look at the stock account, right? It's actually pretty even. And I think I did this a little bit late. But the thing, the strength of this build, especially with this right here, is that his disruptors. I'll even bring up his screen. The strength of this build, although we don't see this, is the fact that the disruptor is pretty, you know, non existent when you go for a build like this. And again, this could have happened. I could have done this a little bit faster. I could have done this a little bit better. So, you know, don't take it for what it is always, you know, create your own build, create your own style for it, you know, maybe cut an extra probe, maybe you want to go for a third base with this, there is actually a way to do this, you go third base, and then you go a bunch of gateways, and you have a third base behind it, and you still have a lot of blink stalkers. So there's multiple ways to do this build, I really want to highlight that, guys. Like, just because you see this build, or just because you see this build, doesn't mean there's only one way to do it. You know, as long as you're getting to this goal where you're going twilight, and then usually a lot of gateways, it's usually pretty, I mean, it's fine, right, it's fine. Now, I will say, this has some strengths, but also has some weaknesses. So I, before I go, like, we attack here, I want to talk about how there are some some real weaknesses here. And what happened really is I actually lost this build a couple of times. I actually lost to these big blink stalker builds, especially on the double gold map. I was really getting punished for going my quick disruptor play, and they were just going big blink stalker numbers. And I really, you know, it was like my disruptor was not even there, right? Because they they dart in, they get some damage, they blink back. You know, and then my disruptor count's so low that I can't really, I can't really do anything about it. So it's a situation where it is really strong on some maps, especially where chokes can be used. You know, maybe you can try to miss a little bit more open, but you can still kind of try to choke them out and things like that. But there are some really good maps where, like Central Protocol. You know, some some of these maps are really, really good for this big blink stalker style. And um, but so what I've been doing to counter this, like let's say you see your opponent going for big blink stalker style, how do you defend? I mean, maybe you go for like this guy actually. This is a really good build he had, right? He's on a lot of gateways as well, right? He's on six gateways, I believe, and I'm on seven gateways, so he's on six gateways. But a way I've been actually counteracting this is getting one or two immortals um, out of my robo facility. And it's a situation where I ran into an issue where I was going for the disruptors too greedily. So it's kind of a you know small you know part of the game where you know you either decide to get disruptors faster and help your later game. Or you get some immortals to help you, you know, fight back against these armies. Because one, two immortals makes makes my blink stalker attack, you know, a lot weaker. And you do face some immortal openers, and it is really, really good against this. But I mean, still, I mean, if they're on immortal, you know, use your observer, blink up to the main, you can still get damage done. You know, take an expansion, 
go double disruptor behind it. You know, he's going for immortals, go double disruptor behind it. You know, you have your own options. So it's a situation where if you're facing this, I would maybe maybe just make an immortal or two to start, but you gotta remember if you're making an immortal or two to start and they go faster disruptors, your disruptor count will be behind. So you gotta you know, it's a kind of a, you know, double edged sword thing, right? You go one way and you can go another way and it's you're never really sure what's exactly right, but you know, you kinda play with it. You kinda figure out, okay, what's better, what's what's good, what's bad, you know? So we push up and we kinda see huh, he's got more stalkers than I was hoping he would have. I was hoping to have I mean we're up four stalkers you can see here, but I was hoping that I'd have more stalkers than this. And I think usually in your games guys you go for a build like this. You know, get the gateways out maybe a little bit earlier. You don't have to go for the because I also went one gate robo this game instead of one gate blink into or into three gate robo. So, I mean I could have had more stalkers here and you guys should have more stalkers too. And it's one of those things like, you know, won't win you every game might not win you the first couple games but it's a it's a good build to practice it's a good build to try it's also a build that takes a lot less skill than disruptors right if your opponents are going disruptors maybe they're not strong with the disruptors you can pick off a disruptor here or there and uh you know it's one of those builds that if you're having a hard time with all the micro you know just go mass blink stalker and see what you can do with it you know have some fun with it so we kind of see right we can kind of blink forward kill disruptors when we can that was actually a bad engagement because I had some things attacking his pylons up here. But you know, you can see, I mean, when the stalker counts are higher, even with disruptors, even though his tech is there, like, there's nothing the disruptors can really do because I'm never really going to take the damage from the disruptor. Right, so we take a pretty decent fight here. But, you know, he's reinforcing well, and, uh, you know, we kind of keep trading, we can't keep trading. And I actually get kind of lucky. I actually went Dark Shrine with this because, you know, it was my first build. I was just kind of threw Dark Shrine in. And the DTs are actually end up doing us quite a bit of damage. And, but I mean, see, even even still, I mean, you could throw you could throw a warp prism into this build, right? And go for a warp prism, four stalkers up here, four some of his units up here, and then attack the third. You can just see how annoying it is for him, though, in a situation where I can just kind of keep moving around. And, and and his stalker count's relatively the same as mine, right? And he's still in a situation, right? This is where you know it's hard for him to deal with all this, and right, like also with this situation, he's got his observer. I'm bringing, I get the DTs out, right? So in my mind, I'm like, okay, the DTs are coming out. I am going to be over here because I want to bring his attention over here. And you can see I also come back here because I know I got DTs going to this meme. I don't want him looking over here. So basically what happens is, you know, I'm, I'm, this is, I'm not really trying to do anything right there. I was just saying, okay, I'm going to get these DTs into the main, see what they can do. And, you know, this is just a nightmare for him, right? He's got one observer in his army, and he's got two DTs in his mineral field, and, you know, Hard to win a game when this happens to you. But, okay, see, then they can kind of fall apart, kill disruptors like that. So, as we can see, you know, things kind of go well for us there. We get a couple disruptors. But, I mean, the build is really, I mean, what happens here from all this, anything. And what 11 is again, like, anything can happen. Like, they could, you could go, you could try this build, they could have three immortals, you know. If you say, okay, I can't get much done, fall back, maybe go double robo. I would throw down another robo, throw down a robo bay, which I end up doing here. I go ro double robo and robo bay. To say, you know what? Okay, well, let's just go for a lot of blinks. Let's go for double double disruptor because disruptors can handle immortals easy, and then you're on the composition you want. So it's not even like you're really committing to no. There's no other commitment to this, right? You can say, okay, I'm going blank stalker, and then I'm going into double disruptor, and you're still fine. I mean, I do not have a forge this game, which is kind of bad. I probably should have a forge, but it's a situation where you know you kind of get as much damage done as you can. And, I mean, every game's different, you know? You gotta make different reads, you gotta make different adjustments, and you see different things, right? So, you gotta remember that when you're playing the game and you're trying to copy a build order. Like, there's so much that goes into a game of StarCraft. Like, there's so many different builds out there, there's so many different things to react to. Like, you gotta be careful, like, you're gonna see me make a big mistake here, ready? And we're even on Stalkers, and I say, okay, we got a big lead, let's just fight here, and, you know, I lose a lot of Stalkers. I end up losing a lot of Stalkers here. Like, we go way down in Stalkers, look at this. So, you know, I make mistakes too, guys. I make mistakes too. And it's a situation where, you know, I mean, I killed so many workers, I thought, alright, we're fine. But then I lost so many stalkers. But I have double disruptor coming at home, so I'll be just fine. I know that. I mean, it's a situation, though, going back to the blank stalker opener. So you kind of want to go, you can also do this on six gates. It doesn't have to be seven gates. But it depends how much more pressure you want. And it's pretty much mostly just really good against different types of builds where... You're going to be facing a lot of pressure. You're going to be where you can do a lot of pressure, and it's not that much to micro. You can kind of poke in with the blink stalkers, see what's up, and you say, "Oh, three mortars at the front. Let's go into his main." You know, "Oh, two mortars in the main. Let's just take a third and get double disruptors out and go into the composition we want." So, I mean, you definitely have some options with this build. It's definitely a strong build, and I really recommend it. And uh, 
you know, the rest of this game is the rest of this game, and he's got so many kills. We're eventually going to end up winning this game, right? I mean, look at the economy still. And uh, But it's it's really, I mean, the DTs, the non-DTs, I mean, even if we don't get kills with the DTs here, let's say he still has great economy, right? He still had a big boom stock around. But then we still would have been on disruptors, right? And we still would have been in an even spot. And I will say I'd recommend something I've been doing in a lot of my PvPs, guys. It's going to be hard. And it took me a while, but, man, yesterday I was having great success throwing down a Stargate on three bases, getting Oracles out. Especially in Blink Stalker Disruptor, having Oracles revealing the opponent's Blink Stalker Disruptor army, like, I can't even emphasize how important that is. Like, you will win so many games. It's like playing Blink Stalker Disruptor with map packs. It really is. Like, honestly, you start doing this composition, and you start using oracles, and just rally oracle here, and then when you're about to fight, reveal his army, and then, man, it makes Blink Stalker Disruptor so easy when you have vision of their army. Like, I, I can't even emphasize it. Like, I would highly recommend on three bases, after you're saturated, go for a Stargate, get some oracles out just for elevation because it's so important. It's so, so important, but... You know, you find your own way, and you create your own games. You know, every game's different. You craft it. Who knows? You know, maybe he's going to mass Void Ray on you. And uh, if he's going to mass Void Ray, you're obviously going to want Storm. Best counter to Void Rays. But it's one of those things, you know, it's good versus a decent amount of Stargate tech. It's good versus a lot of builds. This this build is good versus, you know, he has no economy, so he decides he has to force this on me. And see, I misclicked too, guys. I mean, I was trying to get the War Prism, but I got the Stalkers underneath. But then, uh, you know, he's in desperate need. I got a bunch of Disruptors. Nice blank there. Nice blank there. I mean, you know, this game kind of moves on. He's got one disruptor. I snipe it, and then he blinks on me, and I get the disruptor shots and overcharge and all that goodness. And we end up winning this game. But before that, I mean, I just want to say, you know, don't feel don't feel restrained don't feel restrained by the build order. Say, you know what? It's fine just to go, you know, three gates. It's fine. It's fine to mix it up. You know, maybe you are feeling like, okay, I got a DT feeling. I'm gonna go for this Robo Bay. I'm going to go for this one gate twilight robo bay because I think he's going to go DTs. You know, you just don't know. And it's one of those things where you got to be a little bit careful, but you know, you find your way. Every game is different, so you know, it's important to assess each game as, you know, you can't ex you can't say, "Oh, this build order lost. It must be horrible." And I also do want to point out your first two pylons, guys. I probably should mention this at the beginning, but the first two pylons are very important. So your first pylon here to defend this side of the mineral line the second pylon here to defend this side of the mineral line. Very important to have your first two pylons in positions where they can defend your mineral line and maybe even your third pylon to eventually defend this one or defend your ramp. That's kind of your decision. Your third, you want your third pylon to defend your ramp in case you're scared of aggression or do you want to inf defend, you know, your your, ma your natural mineral field. So, you know, it's kind of a, some decisions you have to make and, you know, every game is different and, you know, half the times I make decisions just on what I'm feeling. So, you know, I don't restrain myself to a build order. When I did this build, I wasn't looking at a guide. I just kind of did this off the cusp, guys. So, I, sometimes I wouldn't worry about build orders as much and just kind of getting out there and practicing. But, uh, you know, that's that would be my, my best recommendation for you guys. So, uh, that's all I got here. Uh, hopefully, you guys enjoyed the video. I just wanted to show you guys that there are some other options. You can try this Blink Stalker build. Uh, you can do it a little bit faster than I did, but, uh, you know, just try it. See how it works for you. And I hope you guys enjoyed my thoughts on this game. So, Please hit the subscribe button and thank you guys for watching.